Today, let's talk about some of the common additives used in mead, cider, and winemaking. I have notes. You know this is important. There are a lot of things that you can add to your brews, okay? Some of them are helpful, some of them aren't, some of them are useful, some of them aren't, some of them are good sometimes, some of them are good other times. It's really hard to know what to use, when to use it, and if you even want to use this thing ever, okay? So I've broken this into two lists, things that we use that we don't have any issue with using, that we use when are necessary, and things that we just prefer not to use. So let's start with the things we use. Yeast nutrients. I'm gonna do a little bit of reading. We like Fermato, but there are many more out there. Yeast nutrients help your yeast to function properly by adding a source of nitrogen that's often lacking in mead and many wine and cider musts. There's a zillion different ways to add yeast nutrients. We keep it simple. We put in a prescribed amount at the beginning of primary fermentation, and that's about it. This is one of those things that you do not want to add more once fermentation is complete. Um, every once in a while somebody asks me if they should add yeast nutrients afterwards, and no, you definitely should not. It can actually alter the flavor. Tannins. Now, you can use tannin additions, okay? There's a couple ways to do it. Two common methods that we use are, for years, we just used black tea. Just a strong cup of black tea, put that in, it adds tannins. Because the tannins are the thing that makes black tea kind of make your mouth go you know, that pucker thing. So that's tannins. Uh, recently, we've started using powdered wine tannin, which ours is actually from uh, oak extract, but there's others that are basically dried up, ground up chestnuts. We started using those. We did a video actually comparing tea versus the wine tannin, and we didn't find a huge, huge difference in the flavors, but I can only imagine that over time, using the powdered wine tannin is going to be more efficient and more consistent and more repeatable. Um, so we kind of lean towards that. It's also really, really easy. This is the kind of thing that you can add in primary or in conditioning. So if you decide that, well, you know, I had some or I didn't add any, and now I need some tannin for some more mouthfeel, you can always add it in conditioning phase. Pectic enzyme. Now this is one that for years we just avoided using. Uh, we didn't really feel it was necessary. And this year we started, well not this year, in 2022 we actually started trying it and we found it to be pretty useful. Um, a lot of fruits and a lot of juices will have pectin in them, sometimes added by the manufacturer, which is just, I understand why they do it, but it kind of isn't great for fermentations. So pectin can make a pectic haze and pectic enzyme helps to break down that haze and lets it all fall out of suspension so that your brew clears. Now, it has a secondary effect too, in that it can help to break down fruit fibers a little bit better and you can get like every last little ounce of sugars out of that fruit sometimes, just a little, little bit more. Uh, pectic enzyme works best in primary, but you can also add it in conditioning phase if things didn't clear up properly. You just need to use about twice as much. Camden tablets. Now these are basically just potassium metabisulfite. It's commonly used in a lot of older recipes where you got whole fruit or whole natural fresh juices from an orchard or something because there's wild yeast, there's bacteria, there's other pathogens, there's all sorts of stuff that could be living in there. And using Camden tablets or potassium metabisulfite to treat that will kill those things off so that you have a fresh slate essentially for your fermentation. Uh, one thing, if you do use potassium metabisulfite, you wanna make sure to wait 24 hours before adding your yeast because, well, it's basically meant to kill off yeast. So if you put your yeast in there, it's probably not going to work very well. We don't use these very often as a lot of time we freeze our fruits or we're buying, uh, you know, juices and things like that, which are already pretty sterile. Um, but if you freeze your fruit, you're killing off a lot of those things that could infect a brew anyway. Maybe not quite as much as the Camden tablets would, but we've not really had any problems with infections as a result. But in the future, when we're starting to do more whole fruits and we're starting to get fruits from places that we might not know the source 100% well, we're going to start using some Camden tablets to help uh, clean those up. Acids. We haven't really delved much into acid additions on the channel because, well, most of our brews, acidity hasn't been an issue. Um, honey itself is acidic, so depending on what else you add in there, you're already getting a decent acidic flavor and all that to the balance of flavors, which is essentially, I mean, at simplest, it's tannins, acids, and sweetness level are the three that we really look at. And acid would be one part of that, 
but because we haven't had a problem, we haven't really gotten into it much, but we are planning to get some acid blend soon, and we're going to do some experimenting to find out, well, is this something that we've just been missing all this time and didn't even know it? Or is it just another tool to add to your toolbox? Yeast holes. Yeast holes are essentially just dead yeast, okay? You might think it's kind of like Fermato, and you'd be right, Fermato has yeast holes in it, but Fermato also has yeast assimilable nitrogen, which is the real essential part of yeast nutrient. Yeast hulls have a great use, but that is for fixing stalls. We find that they actually work fantastic when you have a stalled brew. You add some yeast hulls and mix everything all together, and they start up usually pretty quickly. You can make your own yeast hulls, by the way, if you have a lot of bread yeast laying around, or old expired yeast that you know is just dead, you can bake it a little bit, or throw it in a little bit of water and boil it up, and add that, and it works as a sort of a passable yeast nutrient as well if you just don't have access to anything else. Of course, there are tons of things that you can add, such as herbs, spices, wood chips, and all sorts of other things, extracts, and what have you. Those are really things for another video, so I'm not going to get too much into those here, because those are really for flavor balancing and that sort of thing. I'm talking about more the commercial-style powdered additives that you can get that every homebrew shop seems to want to sell us all in great abundance. That's it for page one. Okay, now on to the more controversial part of this video. And I say that with a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek, because it's not really controversial. These are just things we prefer not to use. So let me explain what I mean by that. And I, I'm going to read what I wrote because I want to be very careful with my wording here. These are things we prefer not to use. Does that mean we are telling you what to do? No. Does this mean we are saying these things are not safe? No. We are simply stating that these are things we either don't bother with or prefer to avoid. So essentially, if you like some of the items that I'm going to be using here, please don't yell at me. It's just we prefer not to use them. But if it works for you, all good. I don't have a problem with that. The next line that I wrote, I, I really like this. I spent a lot of time working on this one little line here. So let me read this to you. Essentially, if you are a home brewer and you enjoy your methods and they produce a product that you like, a product that those you share it with like, and no one is getting sick, you are doing a fine job. Don't let anyone tell you your way is wrong. There are many ways to homebrew. And what I mean by that is our way is just our way. It's a nice, simple startup. It gets you going. There are, you can take this to the upteenth level. You can get super crazy all into like insane stuff for homebrewing, for mead, wine, cider, beer, all of it. You take it to the level you want to take it to. We are, I would consider us to be amateur homebrewers. You know, we have some experience at it, but we make things that we like to drink. That's about the end of it. We want to teach people how to make their own so that there's no fear, there's no intimidation. So you can just say, yeah, I know how to make mead and make your own mead and it's, it's cool. When you start saying, that's the wrong thing, or that's a bad thing, or that's not a good thing, or you have to do it this way, that's when I start to have a little bit of a problem. If you're not causing a problem by the way you're doing it, you're not doing it wrong. That said, if your way is making you sick, or you are doing dangerous things and having bad issues because of it, well, that's a whole different story. Anyway, on to the things that we prefer not to use. The first is DAP, or diammonium phosphate. Um, it's actually a yeast nutrient, though it's not quite like Fermato. What it does is it gives the yeast a great source of nitrogen and phosphorus and can lead to a very vigorous fermentation. It's kind of like candy for the yeast. Generally, it's added in primary. Yeast Energizer. This is a blend of diammonium phosphate, yeast hulls, and some other vitamins and minerals. It's used to stimulate a fermentation. In other words, this is used to get your yeast going. It energizes them. It's also used to restart a stalled fermentation. And for that reason alone, we may look into getting some and experimenting with it just to have another way to fix stalls should they happen. Clarifiers like Kytosan, Superclear, Kieselsol, Isinglass, and Bentonite. And there's a ton more that I didn't mention. These are all used to clarify meads, wines, and ciders. Each has their own science, they all have their own methods, their own ways of applying them. 
and nearly all are used in the conditioning phase to help clear the beverage. Now, I know some people will add these things in primary too. Um, it's not something we do, so I really can't speak to that at all, but um, I know that they do actually clear your brew. Potassium sorbate. This is a preservative, and this is used in conjunction with potassium metabisulfite to stabilize your brew. That's right, you need both. A lot of people think you can just add sorbate and you're done, or you can just add Camden tablets and you're done. Well, not really. You need them both in order to truly stabilize a brew. Together, they prevent the yeast from multiplying and growing, before, therefore halting fermentation. Um, something else to point out on these is a lot of people think that using this method of stabilization kills the yeast. It doesn't. The yeast are actually still alive. They're just unable to reproduce and have trouble metabolizing the sugars into alcohol. So in summary, there's a lot of things you can do, a lot of things you can add to your brew to improve your brew making experience, whether it's making it faster, making it quicker, making it easier, um, clearing it faster, sometimes adding flavor components that make it taste better for you. All of those things are perfectly fine to do. Just know you don't always need everything every time. Best advice I can give, knowing what each thing does and how to use them and when to use them is far better than just saying, okay, well, I have these 15 additives. I'm going to put them in every single brew that I make. Not a necessary thing to do. Make sure you understand what they do, how they work, and what they're doing. Therefore, you can use them when they're necessary and probably improve your brews by the use of some of these additives rather than just throwing the whole kitchen sink in there and hoping for the best. Now, I'm sure there are a ton of additives and other things that I did not talk about in this video. You can ask away in the comments below. Just remember one thing. If you start asking me questions about some of the things that we prefer not to use, remember, I'm not the guy to ask because, well, we don't use them. Therefore, I really probably couldn't truly answer that question. And I'm not afraid to say, I don't know. But on the other things, ask away. Happy to help. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.